Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today once again. And we are discussing today the latest amendments in the VAT degree law. On 20th of September 2022, the President of the United Arab Emirates issued the Federal Decree Law Number 18 of 2022, amending some provisions of the Federal Decree Law Number 8 on the value added tax. These amendments are effective from 1st of Jan 2023. These amendments can be classified into three major categories. The first category is they have just given more explanation of the related provisions of the law. There are no as such changes in the law, but they have more clarified the provisions of the law. And the best examples of the more clarification is that in the Article 26 of the law that deals with the continuous supplies, they have mentioned that these continuous supplies if tax invoice is not being issued maximum by the end of 12 months, it will be considered the supply has happened. Like this was just a reference in the law, this is just clarification in the law. The same thing was already given in the law as well. So first of all, I will say there was some sort of clarification which has been provided in the existing law. There is some additions as well in the existing law. We'll look into the addition, more powers has been given to the federal tax authority and some more provisions have been provided in the law. And third category, we can classify that, that some references have been provided in the law. This is not a clarification. This is not an addition, but references it has been given in the law that some amendments will bring into the VAT regulation. So in three major categories, we can say the first category are the clarification, second category are the addition, and the third category is the references of the law. What we'll do then after this, they brought the procedures as well. The VAT procedure. VAT procedures are effective from 1st of March 2023. What we are discussing today, we are discussing today only the changes in the VAT law and changes in the VAT regulations. And the procedure will have one more session that will discuss the procedures as well. So let's start the discussion related to the VAT law. They have added some more definition in the VAT law than the definition they were tax evasion. They said the person's use of illegal means resulting from the reduction or resulting the reduction of the amount. It can be due to non-payment of tax. It can be refund of tax that the person did not have the right to take the refund. It will be considered tax evasion. They said tax audit. They have added one more definition for the tax audit that authority has the right to verify the fulfillment obligations authority has right to look into the compliance. So this is they've added one more definition related to the tax audit. Tax assessment, they've added voluntary disclosure. They've added that they notify the authority for any error or omissions. By the way, everybody was already submitting the VD, but they have given a proper definition in the law right now. They added tax procedure, as I mentioned, tax procedures have been introduced, but it will be effective starting from 1st of March 2023. Pure hydrocarbon, they have added a definition. They initially hydrocarbons. Now they have added the word pure hydrocarbon. Initially, hydrocarbon was subject to reverse charge mechanism, but now they have given more clarity. They said only pure hydrocarbons, which include hydrogen and carbon, these are the chemistry terms. So if any uh, hydrocarbons are combined only hydrogen and carbon, it will be considered a pure hydrocarbon and it will be subject to RCM. Any other thing other than which is containing anything other than hydrogen and carbon, it will not be considered pure hydrocarbon and RCM provisions will not be applicable. So the term relevant charitable activity, it has been introduced. There are some more minor changes in the law as well. So just start the discussion, the first change was in the Article 5 of the law. In the Article 5, the word that has been given in red, it has been added only. The rest, there is no changes in the existing law. So basically, in the existing law, the wording was given 
entering into a contract between two parties shall be considered a supply of goods. Now they have entered two or more parties. It will be still considered a supply of goods as well. So I will say that everybody was already, even the contract was between three parties, everybody was considering this a supply of goods and they were charging VAT as well. But now based upon the tax position, but right now they have given more clarification based upon this clarification, they said two or more parties even entering into a contract, it will be considered supply of goods. The rest of the provision will be applicable like this related to this clause of the law. There are some changes in the supply of special cases. In the supply of special cases, they said Article 5, this deals with the supply of goods and Article 6 deals with the supply of services. So they said anything, this is a supply of goods, they define the supply of goods properly, then they said anything which is not a supply of goods, it will be considered a supply of services. But now they have given more clarification that they said anything which is not an exception, the exception for the supply of goods, the exception to the supply of services as well. In the exception, they have already given two things. These things were supply of vouchers, unless the value of the voucher is more than its face value, it will not be considered a supply for the purpose of VAT. But if the value of the voucher is more than the face value of the voucher, that the incremental value will be subject to tax, it will be considered supply. So already if the supply of water having the same value or a value less than the value given on the face value, it will be, it was out of the scope and this is still out of the scope. Then said, if the business is being transferred as a going concern basis, it was out of the scope of VAT law, but still, and, and still this is out of scope of VAT law, but they added one more clause and in this clause they said, any other supply specified in the executive regulation of the decree law will not be considered a supply of goods and will not be considered a supply of services as well. So this is the one more addition. Based upon this provisions of the law, they have given, they have given from more provisions in the regulation and they have excluded specifically provisions of the director services. If the specifically they have given in the regulation along with this, they have issued, uh, FT has already issued one public clarification on this as public clarification number 13, performing the functions of directors on a board of directors with a natural person. They have given more clarification by applying clause three of the previous article, of the previous article number seven, by applying this clause, Based upon this class, they have introduced, they have introduced that the natural person providing director services, there are some instant words are there, we will look into this, it will not be subject to that. And after this, FTA has issued one public clarification as I mentioned on this as well. So just look into this director services, it all depends that these services are being provided by a legal person. If these services are being provided by a legal person, yes, services will be taxable. Services will be taxable either provided in 2022 or 2023. Means if the legal person is providing the director services, it will be subject to tax. It doesn't matter, these are being provided in 2022 or 2023. Now, how the legal person can provide the services might be the one company in the market, that company is offering director services and one person is providing the services on the platform of the company. So if the person is providing the services on the platform of the company, it will be considered that the legal entity is providing services, it will be subject to tax. So now, services are being provided by a legal person, yes, it will be subject to tax. Now the question, if the legal person is not providing the services, of course, there will be a natural person who will be providing the services. If the services are being provided by a natural person, now the question arises, these services are being provided by the natural person as a freelancer or the natural person is acting officially as a board member of any entity. If the services, natural person is providing services as a freelancer, freelancer services will be subject to tax as well. It doesn't matter either it has been provided in 2022 or it has been provided in 2023. But if this natural person is providing services officially, formally as a board member, board member of any government or any private establishment, then they said 
it will be subject to tax. So we have established that if these director services are being provided by a natural person, it will be subject to, uh, sorry, if these services are being provided by a legal person, it will be subject to tax. If these services are being provided by a natural person, freelancer, it will be subject to tax. If these services are being provided by a natural person, formerly, officially, as a board member of any government entity or any private entity, it will not be subject to tax starting from 1st of Jan 2023. But there are transitional provisions. Transitional provisions is there a possibility might be the person has signed a contract for more than one year and some services has been given before 1st of Jan, some services are given after 1st of Jan, might be invoice has been issued before 1st of Jan, might be the invoice has been issued after 1st of Jan. So advances have been received, advances have not been received. So now the transitional provisions will be applicable, but we have established that the person, natural person who is officially on the board, either her services will be out of the scope starting from 1st of Jan 2023. The transitional provision for the transitional provision, they said advance received or invoice issued in 2022. These are the provisions of the Article 25 of the VAT law. And VAT law says the date of supply will be earlier of the following. These are date of invoice, date of payment receipt, or date of provision of services. And then now the law is exactly this is the application of the Article 25. They are asking, they are asking basically advance has been received. Our invoice has been issued in 2025. If advance has been received, invoice has been issued, the services will be subject to tax in 2022. If the advance has not been received in 2022 and invoice has not been issued in 2022, if none of any of these has happened in 2022, now we look at services has been provided in 2022 or not. If the services has been provided in 2022, now the question arises, is this services, the board, director services, the board has already basically in the AGM, usually it has been approved, the amount has been approved in the AGM, and we know the amount, then it will be subject to tax in 2022, otherwise it will not be subject to tax, it will be out of the scope. So let me basically recap, we have already established Director services, natural person providing officially direct board BOD member, it will be subject to tax. If invoice has not been issued, if payment has not been received, or if services have been served in 2022, but it has not been declared in the AGM, then it will be out of the scope. Other it will be sorry, it will not if the invoice, sorry, if invoice has been received, invoice has been issued, if advance has been received, or services provided and GM and AGM incurred in 2022, then it will be subject to tax. Otherwise it will be out of the scope. So you can find the same thing on the chart as well. We can say it will be out of the scope means services provided in 2022 or provided in 2022, but the fees was not known in 2000, known only in 2023. No invoice was issued, no advances was received, then it will be out of the scope. So director services, the bottom line is, Natural person director services officially acting as a board member will be out of the scope of VAT law starting from 1st of Jan 2023. And the directors who are already registered for tax purposes, they need to get themselves deregistered with the passage of time within the due date. The mandatory tax registration in the old, there are no as such main, major variation there. The minor amendments are there, and these amendments will not have any. Any, any changes in the law. Basically, they said, if the person is not already registered for VAT, that person can apply for, this was obvious, if the person is not already registered for VAT, that person will only apply for VAT registration. If the person is already registered for VAT, they will not apply for sure VAT registration. The registration exceptions as well, they said, the authority taxable person from the tax registration, whether registered or not, upon his request, if suppliers are only subject to zero duty. Initially, initially, the person who was involved in the zero rated supply, that person was in a position to get the exception from the FTD. But now they have given the same powers to the person who was registered for VAT as well. 
I'm just giving an example, one company, their company was doing local supply, the company was doing exports as well. Now the company is only dealing in the exports and all his its services or goods are zero rated. If the registrant company has zero rated supplies of goods and services, now the registrant can apply for exception as well. This was not available to the people, to the business earlier. Earlier it was available only to the unregistered business. Now they have given this to the registered businesses as well. Now the registered businesses can avail this exception. Tax registration cases, initially in the previous law, in the previous law, the registered businesses was applied to the FTA for deregistration. In the provisions of the law, FTA had not any powers to deregister any business. Now these powers have been given to the FTA. FTA can deregister any business if the FTA feels that the that the issue registration decision if the authority find the continuity of such registration may prejudice the integrity of the system. But if in case FTA is availing this provision and FTA deregistering business, still the businesses will be liable to pay outstanding liability. This is obvious they will pay. So means in this article, more powers have been given to the FTA and FTA can deregister any business which FTA fees may prejudice the integrity of the system. And this provision was not available to the FTA in the previous law. Date of supply. As such, there is no change in this article. This is just a change in the wording. We all know this in case of continuous supply, the maximum due date was basically end of 12 months. In case of continuous supply, the maximum due date was end of 12 months. It was automatically being considered supply by the end of 12 months. It was already given that goods and services provided, it does not exceed one year from the date of provision of goods and services, then it will be considered a date of supply. So from date it has been supplied. So if the tax invoice has not been issued, if the payment has not been received, at the payment and uh, Date of payment and so that by the end of maximum 12 months it was considered supply. Now the FTA have put in the same thing in a separate clause, the date of expiration of one year from the date of goods and services were provided. As such, no change in the law. Even these goods are being provided, services are being supplied, these are continuous services. We know this continuous services that consecutive payments. So 12 months, I just wanted to give you an example. The rental services. We signed a rental contract with the rental. This covers, can you give me the water? This rentals cover period of 12 months. If this covers a period of 12, I suppose five years, if this covers for a period of five years, if rental contract has been signed today, we are receiving the payment. And uh, I'm sorry, we have not received the payment. We have not issued the tax invoice, but the maximum from the date this contract has been signed by the end of 12 months, it will be considered a supply for the previous 12 months. So we are already implementing this clause on all our clients. And even the same thing they have introduced in a separate clause in the law. As such, there are no changes in the law, they are just mere clarification. Place of supply. Again, I say it was it was not mentioned in the law, but we were already implementing the same clauses in the market. They said basically they have added one more clause. This is a place of supply of goods shall be in the state, in the state place of supply shall be, if the goods are being exported outside the UAE, it will be place of supply in the, in the UAE, it will be zero rated. If the goods are being exported to a unregistered person in the implementing state where the threshold is not being crossed, place of supply will be UAE. If the goods are being imported within the UAE, or goods are being supplied within the UAE by the supplier which is not based in the UAE and the value of the goods is crossing threshold and the recipient is unregistered person, then place of supply of the goods will be UAE. Now they've added one more clause as well. They said if the goods are being supplied within UAE, the ownership of goods is being transferred within the UAE, then the place of supply will be in the UAE as well. I just wanted to give you one company based in Singapore, this Singaporean company, is importing the goods to the agent on its own name in the UAE. Then after importing the goods, this company is supplying the goods. Once this company is supplying the goods within the UAE, means ownership of the goods is being transferred in the UAE. The place of supply of such goods will be UAE as well. They have added one more class. 
what we were already advising to our clients who are already implementing the same stage, even the goods, even there are no threshold applicable by the way on these goods. Even this is the goods of single dirham are being supplied within the UAE by a non-resident person where the import, they are basically they are importing through the agent, then they are supplying even the single dirham value of the good, it will be subject to tax and the non-resident person will be liable to register for tax purposes. I'm not asking they need to come here and get them to registered as a business. I'm just focusing they need to get themselves registered for tax purposes only. FTA will allot them tax registration number. Agent, there are no as such changes in the, again, the, as there are no changes in the law. Again, a clarification, just, uh, just they have refined the wording. If this is a non-resident person, a non-resident person has local agent in the UEA, this local agent is negotiating contract on behalf of non-resident person, and this local agent is executing contract on behalf of non-resident person, then it will be assumed the non-resident person who is a principal, that person has a place of supply in the UAE, and that person will be liable to register for tax purposes. And if that principle, which is based out of UAE, that is a non-resident person based out of UAE, supplying goods in the UAE through the agent, agent is acting as a exclusive agent, working on behalf of the principal, executing contract on behalf of the principal. It, it will be considered a supply by the principal, and principal will be principal will be liable to register in the UAE and they need to get, submit the return as well. For, and the important thing is if the principal is supplying any goods and services, the RCM provisions will not be applicable. They will not be subject to reverse charge mechanism, but principal will be liable to register, principal will be liable to submit the return. It will be assumed that the goods are being supplied by the principal or the services are being supplied by the principal. This is a value of deemed supplies. Value of the DM supply, they have just added a reference of Article 37 in the Article 36. The rest everything is same. Basically, we know this the Article 36 deals when there is the goods or services are being transferred between the related party. If these goods and services are being transferred between the related party and the related party it doesn't have any right to claim input tax, then the law says such transfer should be at the market value. The reason is basically the counterparty, which is the related party, that doesn't have any right to claim input tax. So there is a possibility, might be one person, suppose this is the party A, this is the party B. This party B doesn't have any right to claim input tax, might be the party B is dealing with the exempt supplies, might be the party B is the unregistered party. If these conditions are there, then the party B will not be able to claim input tax. And if party A is supplying anything to party B, which is the related party of party A, if the market value of the goods is 1000 and VAT is 5%, which is 50, there is a possibility that the party A will deliver the goods instead of 1100 and apply VAT, which is 5. So basically, this is a tax region. Ultimately, government is losing the money, FT is losing the money because these are related parties and counterparty, the recipient of goods and services doesn't have any right to claim the input tax. There is a possibility the supplier will decrease the value of the goods. So if the supplier will decrease the value of the good, they will evade the tax and FTA said very clearly, if the related party, if the related party is getting the goods and services below the market value, then the transaction between the related party should be at the market value. Now they are asking, initially deemed supply was subject to tax at cost. But now they are asking the deemed supply, means the goods and services are being supplied without any getting any consideration, then the value of the supply will be subject to tax at the market value, which was subject to tax earlier at the cost. So deemed supply will be subject to tax starting from 1st of Jan 2022. We need to keep in provision that if the value of the goods is 500 per person in the preceding 12 months period, then we know this, it will not be subject to that. If the value of supply is more than 500 in the preceding 12 months period, the whole amount will be subject to that. Now, the same provision will be applicable. Along with this, this provision will be applicable. The deemed provision, sorry, deemed supply will be subject to tax at the market value. This is the exception, but as such, there are no changes. 
The exception to the Article 34 of this law, the value of supply in case of deemed supply when the taxable person purchases goods and services to make taxable service, does not use the goods and services, but it will be equal to the total cost. So we have just established that deemed supply will be subject to tax at the market value. But they are asking if the goods and services has been purchased by the taxable person, these goods and services have not been used for the purpose for which it was purchased. Means when these goods and services were purchased, the taxable person paid input tax. Now these goods and services are not being used for the purpose for which these goods and services were purchased. Means might be the goods have lost, might be, might be they've given it to someone. Then in this situation, that if these goods and services are not being used for the purpose for which these and goods and services were purchased, then they said it will be subject to tax at the cost. This deemed supply will be subject to tax at the cost. Supply of goods and services which are subject to tax at zero rated. So initially in the previous law, this the word import was not there, but now they have added the word import of concerned goods and services. Some goods are subject to zero rate tax in UAE, but if the same goods are being supplied by the non-resident person, earlier the recipient of goods, the importer of goods were applying reverse charge mechanism, means the person was paying output tax on behalf of non-resident person. But now they said if the goods and services itself are zero rated in the UAE, even this is being supplied by the resident person, even these are being supplied by the non-resident non-resident person in the UAE, still it will be subject to VAT at zero rated. So even this is a local supply or import. If the item itself are zero rated and then import of those items will be zero rated as well. And the businesses importer of the such goods or importer of such services, they will not be liable to apply a reverse charge mechanism because the good with itself will be zero rated supply. These are the supply exempt supply as such there is no change minor amendment in the wording only nothing more than this we all know that the four supplies are exempt these four supplies are financial services are exempt. supply of financial services are exempt supply of residential building after three years second supply sorry second supply of the residential building it will be exempt first supply is the first supply of the building is a zero rate and second supply of the residential building will be exempt Supply of financial services will be exempt. Supply of bear land, it will be exempt. Supply of local passenger transport, it will be exempt as well. We know this. And the same thing they mentioned in the revised law as well, but they have just rephrased the wording. The supply of financial services, it will be exempt from the UE VAT law. This is a, we have already discussed pure hydrocarbons. So what will basically happen, hydrocarbon, in the UE, we know this whenever the buyer is buying any natural gas, any natural gas, pure hydrocarbons, recipient of these goods and services. So basically, we the what was the written in the old law? In the old law, if this uh, natural gas or hydrocarbon were supplied low by the local supplier, though local supply were not liable to charge any output tax, but local supply was taking a declaration, confirmation from the recipient of these goods that the recipient will use these goods for reselling purposes or recipient will use these goods to produce electricity. If these two conditions were being fulfilled and recipient was a registered person, three things were, were there. Recipient of the natural gas is a registered person Recipient was using these goods for reselling purposes. Recipient were using these goods to produce electricity. If these three conditions were being fulfilled, the recipient was liable to apply a reverse charge mechanism and supplier of these goods were not liable to charge any output tax. Now they have given more clarification on the hydrocarbons only. And I have already discussed the hydrocarbons. They said pure hydrocarbon, you can apply reverse charge mechanism. If there is any other element in the hydrocarbon other than hydrogen and other than 
carbon, then it will not be considered a pure hydrocarbon and reverse charge mechanism provisions will not be applicable. Supplier will be liable to charge output tax on such supplies of goods. So again, just given more clarification of pure hydrocarbons and they have removed all other items which are containing any particles other than hydrogen and other than carbon. They have made more clarification. They, this is again, this is, they initially using the word written confirmation. As I mentioned, the supplier is liable to take the confirmation. Now they are asking supplier is needs to take a declaration from the customer to apply the reverse charge mechanism. And this declaration will be supplier is a registered person, the acquisition of goods for resale purposes or the use of production or distribution of any form of energy, which was already not there. Moreover, they have given more powers to the FTA, the cabinet, sorry, to the cabinet may issue a decision specifying other goods and services that will be subject to reverse charge mechanism. There are no other amendment in the law. So I will say in this article, they have just redefined the word pure hydrocarbon, nothing more than this. The recovery of the input tax. We know this to, to claim the input tax, the tax of a person has two tax period. In the two tax period, the person has right to claim input tax. And we know that the, if the person has intention to make the payment within six months from the due date, then the person has right to claim once this, once this uh, right, uh, once this, uh, I'll say, intention to make the payment is established, and within six months, the person has intention to make the payment, the person has the right to claim input tax in the true tax period. Now, if the person is receiving any tax invoice, and there is an issue with the tax invoice and the person, recipient of goods and services, is discussing with the supplier, the both are negotiating, both are trying to sort out the issue, both are not agreeing on amount. And after once these both parties will agree on a certain amount, that date means this invoice will be accepted on that date by the recipient. Once this invoice will be accepted by the recipient on that date, the date will be considered from that point of time that the payment will be made within six months from the due date of payment. And the recipient of goods and services have a right to claim input tax in the same tax period with both of the parties have agreed. And the recipient of goods has decided to accept the invoice. So two tax period to have to claim the input tax. The important thing in this discussion is the person must have the tax invoice in their hand. If the person recipient of goods and services doesn't have the tax invoice in their hand, the recipient cannot claim input tax. Now, they have added two more clauses along with this as well. The recipient of goods for the local supply, recipient of goods or recipient of services for the local supply, they must have tax invoice to claim input tax. But in the law, they have not mentioned in the earlier copy that in case of import, of goods or import of services, the recipient must have tax invoice in hand to claim the input tax. Now they have added two more clauses. They have said, again, I will say for my side, this is a slight clarification. And most important thing in it, they have added that in case you are the importer of the goods, you must have the import documents to claim the input tax. If you doesn't have the import documents, you cannot claim input tax, but tax invoice condition is still there. So either you are buying locally, either you are importing goods, either you are importing services in all these conditions, the importance of tax invoice is there. If you don't have tax invoice in your hand, you cannot claim input tax. This was our, our interpretation based upon the previous version of the law as well. So what they have added, they have added if you are importer of goods, if you are importer of goods, you must have import documents in your hand to claim the input tax. If you don't have the import documents in your hand, you cannot claim input tax. But don't forget, you cannot claim input tax, but you will be liable to make the payment on behalf of non-resident person if the goods itself are not subject to zero rate tax. So RCM, RCM provisions are the RCM. I just wanted to clarify the RCM. There are a lot of confusion in the market. What is RCM? People usually say RCM means output and input. It will nullify each other. No, this is not the case. RCM, there are two legs of RCM. One is output, one is input. These both are two different things. These both are not integrated, interrelated. Output and input. So RCM doesn't mean you need to pay output, you need to claim input. No, this is not the case as I mentioned. Output means RCM has two legs. One leg is output tax. 
you are liable to pay tax on behalf of non-resident supplier. This is output tax levy. You are liable, importer of the goods or importer of the services is liable to pay output tax on behalf of the non-resident supplier. This is RCM. RCM definition is over here. The next, what is input tax? It depends in which business you are in. If you are dealing with the exempt supplies, you are importing goods, it doesn't mean you can claim input tax as well. So you will be liable to pay output tax on behalf of non-resident supplier only. But if you are dealing with the taxable supply, you will consider it as a purchaser. You will assume it that the goods are being supplied by the non-resident supplier to you. Once you will assume the goods are being supplied by the non-resident supplier to you, you at the same time, acting as a supplier of goods on behalf of non-resident supplier to yourself. So you will pay output tax on behalf of non-resident supplier. At the same time, you are buyer, you are importer of the goods as well. At the same time, you will claim input tax as well. So what I'm asking, the definition of RCM only, you are liable to pay tax on behalf of non-resident supplier. This is the definition of output tax. Or this is the definition of reverse charge mechanism. So in this situation, important thing, what I'm trying to say, if you are importing goods, if you are importing goods and you don't have the import documents in your hand, you will be liable to pay tax on behalf of non-resident supplier, but you will not be able to claim input tax. The same thing, in case you are importing the services, you must have the tax invoice in your hand to claim the input tax. If you don't have the tax invoice in your hand, even for the import of services, you will not be able to claim input tax, but you will be liable to pay output tax on behalf of non-resident supplier. Charities, they said government entities and charities. If the government entities are incurring expenses for the purpose of sovereign activities, Government entities have right to claim 100% input tax. If these government entities pay input tax for a charity, for the relevant charitable activity, this charity, charitable institution has right to claim 100% input tax. If these expenses are being incurred by the government entity for the non-sovereign activities, or if these expenses are being incurred by the charitable activity, not related to the charitable entity, not related to the charitable activity, then these entities will not be able to claim related input tax. And if these the, some expenses are for the sovereign activity, some expenses are for the non-sovereign activity, some expenses are for the relevant charitable activity, some expenses are not for the relevant charitable activity, then the apportionment rule will be applicable. What we need to mind that this will only be 100% claimable if these are being used for the purpose of sovereign activities, if the, these are being used for the relevant charitable activity, otherwise they will not be able to claim. These are some adjustments, the instances where a resistance shall adjust output tax after the date of supply in the following instances. There are no change in the law, but these are the situation instances given where the where the person will be able to adjust the output tax. When the supply was cancelled, they will adjust to the credit note. Treatment supply has been changed due to change in the nature of the supply. Previously agreed consideration for supply was entered. The recipient of goods, the recipient service returned them goods. Now they are asking if the tax was charged or tax treatment was applied in error. This is the addition in this situation. The Registrant will adjust the output tax as well. And we know this how it will be adjusted. It will be adjusted through the tax credit note. And they will issue it, the supplier will issue a tax credit note based upon this. The value of the supply or the value of the services will be changed. Mechanism so basically, tax credit note initially for the tax, there is no timeline for the issuance of tax credit note. But now they have introduced the timeline for issuance of tax credit note. They said, like a tax invoice must be issued within 14 days from the date of supply, or maximum in case of continuous supply, maximum by the end of 12 months from the date of supply, the tax invoice must be issued. Now they are asking, tax credit note needs to be issued within 14 days from the date any of the following conditions are met. But basically, when it was due, that the both of the parties have agreed that the value of supply needs to be amended. 
that date will be considered the point from that point onward within 14 days they need to change the value the need to issue the tax credit note so basically in the revised law the timeline has been given to issue the tax credit note within 14 days from the date the situation was provided it was agreed by both of the parties conditions a person can amount tax issue we know this that per, uh, any person who received an amount as a tax personal document issued by him shall pay this amount to the authority even if it is not due so i think there no again there no change in the law this is again uh, just uh, uh, a refinement this uh, they rephrase the provisions even this person they are asking if anyone is collecting tax from the market person is a registered person unregistered person if they are collecting any vat from the any person from the market, they are liable to pay this back to the FTA. Any person receiving an amount as tax or issuing a tax invoice in respect of amount must pay such amount to the authority. This shall be regarded as being similar to tax due under the provision. So if you are collecting tax from the market by issuing a tax invoice or without issuing any tax invoice, you are liable to pay this amount to the government. Date of, they said, existence shall issue a tax invoice within 14 days. Then they say a resistance shall issue a tax invoice within 14 days from the date of supply. The executive regulation this law shall determine the cases where in, basically these are exceptions they have given more powers. That exception, we know this tax invoice needs to be issued within 14 days from the date of supply, but there may be some exceptions, might be they will issue a cabinet decision. They will say there are some chances where the person, taxable person, is not liable to issue tax invoice within 14 days. Access to the recoverable refund. Again, there is a just, just minor amendment. The concept is same. The interpretation of the law is same. This, if you have paid excess amount to the government, this excess amount you can apply for refund at any time to the FTA. And this excess amount can be taxable, recoverable in tax for the FTA can adjust or FTA will refund this amount. As such, there is no changes in the Props, there are no changes in the provision, there are no changes in the interpretation of the law. Objective is excess refund amount, excess amount can be refunded from the FTA. The person can apply for refund at any time. And this excess amount, FTA will adjust the amount and FTA may pay the remaining amount to the taxable person. So this is as such, there are no changes in the provision of the law. Administrative penalties and tax procedure, no change. Almost the same thing they have added without prejudice to the provision of this tax procedure law, they have added this wording. Nothing more than this, rest of the provision is same. Tax division without, again, a minor amendment, no change. Interpretation is same, just they have, they have refined the wordings without prejudice to the instances of tax division referred to the tax procedure law. If it is proven that a person who is not a registered acquires goods and services, again, they have no change in it. They have kept the same provisions of the law. This new article has been added, and this new article has been added 79 BAS Statute of Limitation. Basically, this article has defined that the FTA can conduct the audit of any taxable person maximum within five years from the end of the relevant tax period. And this is basically, I will say, the maximum time frame in which FTA one can conduct the audit. FTA can conduct the audit maximum within five years from the end of relevant tax period. But there are some exceptions. These exceptions are if the FTA has issued notification before the end of five years, once they've issued notification before the end of five years, then FTA has the right to conduct the audit even after five years. But the law says, even they are conducting the audit after the end of five years, but they are asked, the law is saying, FTA must complete this audit within four years from the date of issuing this notification. So again, let me repeat, FTA cannot go and conduct the audit for more than five years. But if there are some exception, they can go and they can conduct the audit after five years. If this is a normal order, they need to issue notification before the end of five years to the taxable person. And if they've issued a notification before the end of five years to the taxable person, they must finish the audit maximum within four years from the date of notification. Second thing, 
they said if the voluntary disclosure has been applied in the fifth year, still FTA has the right to conduct the audit for, but they need to finish this VD within five within one year from the date of voluntary disclosure. The voluntary disclosure cannot be submitted after five years from the end of tax period. But this time frame of five years will not be applicable in two situations. These two situations are, first situation is that the FTA may conduct audit or assessment of tax within 15 years from the end of tax period in which the tax revision has occurred. Means that if there is a tax revision, the time frame to conduct the audit is 15 years. So four years, five years clause will not be applicable. If someone is evading the tax, tax revision is there, the time frame for the FTA to conduct the audit is 15 years, not five years. Second thing, if the taxable person was liable to register, but unfortunately the person was failed to register itself, and then the FTA may conduct a tax audit or issue a tax assessment within 15 years from the date of which the taxable person should have registered for that. So there are three, or uh, one is maximum five years, maximum, sorry, less than or equal to five years. Second is less than or equal to 15 years. Third is less than or equal to 15 years. If someone is evading the tax, tax revision period is 15 years. If someone has not registered itself and not submitted the return, the period is 15 years. Five years is if someone is not evading the tax and was registered. Now five years time frame, maximum five frame, this can be extended as well. In case of normal audit, they issued notification in the last year. Mean fifth year, they issued the notification, they need to complete maximum within next four years. They issued a notification in fourth year, they need to complete within next four years. They issued a notification in third year, they need to complete the notification next four years. And the same, in case of VD, and if this VD had been submitted, they need to complete this VD maximum within one year. Means if the VD had been submitted in fourth year, within fourth year from the end of relevant tax period, and this VD would have been closed within the fifth year. There's no possibility of going beyond five years. The only possibility of going beyond five years is if the VD has been submitted in fifth year. If the VD has been submitted in fifth year, FTA must need to close this VD within sixth year. They can go maximum for one year. And after one year, nobody can submit. After five years, even VD cannot be submitted. Hopefully, it will be cleared for clarified to everyone. So means if the businesses they have not done get themselves registered, they need to get, get themselves registered. And secondly, they are evading the tax. Don't forget, FT has time frame of fifteen years. Transitional provisions. I think transitional provision of the law it was applicable starting from first of Jan two thousand and twenty eighteen two zero one eight first of Jan. These provisions will be exact regulation of the law will determine the provision of the application of the decree law where a contract has been concluded before the effective date of the degree law, but the goods and services were supplied wholly or partly after the effective date. We need to wait for the guidance from the FTA, but what we did at the time of implementation of law, we asked our client, they need to get the goods or services, whatever they have received by the end of 30th of 31st December 2017, they need to get its value whatever they need to have a third party certificate. And whatever was pertaining to 2017, for sure it will not be subject to tax. And after that, it will be subject to tax. The most important implications were on the construction sector. The project of millions of dollars and millions of dollars, even 50% has been completed. And they made the delivery in 2018. It doesn't mean the whole amount should be subject to tax. By 31st December 2017, they would have done the valuation. Whatever the valuation they have, they have the certificate from third party which shows 50% of the work has been completed. It should not be subject to tax principally. Either the amount is being received, either the invoice is being issued in 2018 after the effective date of the law. Anyway, we need to wait for the executive regulations. What are the clarification they are given? What are the basically provisions of the law they are provided in the respective executive regulations on this? So again, tax procedure, they've already issued the tax procedures. Due date is 1st of March, 2020, 2023. And we'll have one more session on the tax procedures. Again, just high level recap, entering into a contract, summary of amendments, entering into a contract between two or more parties, it will be considered registered person will be liable to apply for registration exception as well we discussed. 
right to deregister has been given to the FTA for continuous supply the period of 12 months as there is no amendment. Article 26 the continuous supply ownership rule has been transferred within the UAE. It will be subject, it will be considered supply within the UAE, it will be subject to tax in UAE. Transport related services, the place of supply of the transport related services will be the place of supply from where the transportation starts. It has been rephrased place of resident agent. They know basically again, this is the just refinement, a rephrase of wording, nothing more than this. The value of the deemed supply will be subject to tax at the market value. This is important provision. If you have so many related party transactions, you are not part of the tax group, then you need to look into this very carefully because deemed supply are not subject to tax at cost, neither subject to tax at the market value, but deemed supply having a value of 500 within the preceding 12 months to any individual or single person it will not be subject to tax. You need to consider this. Import or means of transport, imports will also be subject to zero rate. Again, this is a very good clause and very good clarification. Reverse charge will apply only pure hydrocarbons. It will not apply any particle, any, any, any products which are carrying other than hydrogen, other than carbon. To claim the input tax and imports, person must have import document. Again, this is a very important clause. So this clause number 55, clause 36, and uh, clause 48. Okay, government entities, this is a very common clause, is fine. Tax adjust adjusts output tax charge. This is a very common clause. I think everybody was doing it earlier. This is again important clause. They have set the time frame for issuing a tax credit note the 14 year the customer will be paid to the FTA. So these article 62, article 55, article 48, article 37, sorry, 36. Can you go back? Can you go back? And go back back. Then uh, Article 5, 15, 21, 26, 27, 30, the uh, 30 will be a great impact. And uh, uh, next. So Article 30, 36, 48, 55, and 62, it will have major impacts on the businesses. And rest of the articles, either clarifications or more powers has been given to the FTA. Thank you very much. This is over from my side. And uh, if you have any question, you can drop me an email at info at crestcooper.com or you can give me a call as well at 974-339-1488. And thank you very much for your support, for your appreciation and for joining us. So let me look into the questions. I have received only one question. Do you also have a webinar regarding new platform Imara Tax? Imara Tax, I think, Imara Tax, uh, uh, I think this is the straightforward uh, changes in the platform. You need to get your email verified and after getting your email verification, you need to move ahead and whatever has been given in the platform introduced by the by the FTA, you need to submit a return on the same platform. And along with this, you need to apply for the refund as the farmer they're asking. Other than this, uh, in case they're asking something tomorrow, might be asking e-invoicing or invoice to invoice comparison into the MRA tax. They will give more clarification on this. We, need, we all need to learn basically whatever, whenever the information will be released by the FTA, we all will be able to learn. We all will be able to go through this. So if you have any other question, you are most welcome. Any question guys, please. Okay, one Sunita. Is there any timeline to apply for the VAT refund? No, there is no timeline. Uh, if you are not applying uh, on timely basis, you are losing your money. So FT will never ever give any timeline for this. <laughs> you need to apply and you need to get your money on timely basis. So was Iqbal RCM, is the reverse charge on services still be calculated and declared in the return? <laughs> Important thing is, Import of services are subject to reverse charge mechanism. And as I mentioned, reverse charge only means that you are liable to pay tax on behalf of non-resident person. It means that if you are importing the services, you are liable to pay tax on behalf of non-resident person. Reverse charge is over. After this, you wanted to claim input tax, you must have tax device in your hand. Yes, this reverse charge is still applicable on the services. But you must have a tax invoice in your hand to claim input tax, but still you will be liable to pay output tax by the way, even you don't have the 
टैक्स इनवाइस इनवर्ड है सो एनी अदर क्वेश्चन गैस यू आर वेलकम नो मोर क्वेश्चन Okay, guys. Have a lovely evening. Thank you very much, and nice speaking to all of you. Thank you. Bye bye.